Basketball coach Mike O'Connell. Last year's 17 wins just wasn't enough. He had a great ball club, but this year is featuring a lot of what he featured last year. Some great outside play, pushing the ball up and down the court, and having the type of athletes that can go to the board, come back, get the rebounds, and put them back up for scores. And that's led them to a 4-0 record in the Sicka West thus far this year for the Tigers of Joliet West. For Joliet Central's Drake Dean, he was all smiles earlier this week after their upset victory on this Joliet Central floor against the Joliet Catholic Academy Hilltoppers. And they did it with tenacious hustle and defense and some very hard work for baskets by a very young, upstart crew of basketball players for Joliet Central. So it is the ultimate rivalry of Joliet High School basketball, and that's Joliet Township, the bragging rights of Joliet. The best of the East against the best of the West. And tonight we'll find out just who is the best. From Joliet Central High School on the gymnasium floor, the Joliet West Tigers overall at 10 and 3, 4 and 0 in the Sicka West against the 5 and 10 Steelmen who are 1 and 3 in conference play on our high school basketball game of the week. Well, hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Passion, along with Frank Palmasani, and we had a great rivalry of two great Joliet Township schools here earlier, Joliet Catholic and Joliet Central. Now tonight, the two JTs lock horns, and that's always a great battle. It really will be a great battle, Joe, and this is because both teams are coming from totally different perspectives. Joliet Central is a young building club, hoping to build on every game they play, and Joliet West is a team building toward a conference championship in their own mind, and obviously wanting to be a tournament team. Well, coming off that big upset last week over Joliet Catholic Academy, how long is that emotional tug going to pull on the sleeve of these young kids from Central? Can it hold out against a superior team in West? Well, you know, it could obviously or potentially work to West's favor because West, you would think, would be thinking of a possible letdown going into this game, and yet because Central pulled that victory Tuesday night, it gives Coach O'Connell an opportunity to remind his team that, hey, they just beat a team with the same number of wins as we have. So we'll see, but I think obviously in the long run, it's advantageous to Central because they're looking to build confidence and confidence for the season, not just for one game. Well, let's check the keys to the game. First off, for the Tigers of Joliet West, and one thing Mike O'Connell wants to key on tonight, Frank, and that's rebounding. He really wants his kids to get after the boards. Also, chase those turnovers. He saw what turnovers can do. Not only can it force the team out of their rhythm, but also it helps that third key, and that's controlling the tempo. Yeah, really, everyone builds on one another. What he's really looking to do is force a running game. He wants turnovers, he wants the ball off the boards, he wants the ball to go to the guards, quick guards get the ball off the floor. He wants a speed up game, he certainly doesn't want a slow down situation. He knows that if he can get a fast tempo game, he's gonna come out victorious. For Joliet Central and Coach Greg Peden, one of their main keys for the game also is on the boards. They need to rebound as well. He didn't mention that first to me though. He wants to protect the ball and that goes back again to the turnovers that Joliet West wants to cause and most of all contain those Joliet West guards, Shelby and Evans, because they really control the game for West. What Greg is looking for is consistency of performance. And when a, a coach judges consistency of form, performance by good defense, good rebounding, and controlling the basketball. Whether or not the shot goes down is usually secondary to making sure you take care of the ball. So Greg feels if we take care of the ball, he's going to feel comfortable offensively. Can't talk about these two schools without talking about the great rivalry that started back in the mid-60s when the Joliet Township High School system split into West, East, and at that time, and of course, Central. The rivalry continues here tonight. We talked to both coaches about where that rivalry is today. For years, it's, it's just been a great rivalry. Ever since East closed, uh, I moved over to West. Greg has been at Central. We've had some great games. And I'll never forget the first one, though. We came in with only one defeat, and they beat us by 26 points. Uh, we were able to turn around, though, and beat them twice that year. And since then, it's uh, we've had some great games. No matter what the records are, uh, no matter who's up, who's down, you normally get a pretty good ball game. Well, there's a lot of things. Actually, the rivalry here is a little bit more intense. So as opposed to the other night where, you know, virtually it's all going to be positive, the game like this, Joliet West and Joliet Central, you have to kind of tone down your emotions just a little bit so that you can play under control. And that's really what we're going to be looking, trying to take the positive energy that you can get out of emotional and at the same sort of time uh, keep yourself under control well enough that you can play the game with your head. And certainly you cannot overlook 
what the fans do to a basketball game of this magnitude for these two schools tonight. Fans will be uh, fun because they'll be into the game, and I think the fans at home are anxious to see what's really been the story of the season, and that's the freshman uh, uh, freshman for Juliet West, Gary Bell. We're going to get our first chance to see him tonight. It's going to be fun to watch him. He's gotten accolades from everyone. And we will find out about Bell and the rest of his crew when we ring it up here in just a moment. The starting lineups and the opening tip-off of tonight's high school basketball game of the week is coming up right after these timeouts. She's like an older friend that would give me advice, anything I needed. She would always respect us and listen to us. She, she really helps us to grow. I think she's kind of like a role model to me, and she's generous. Those girls are Girl Scouts, and they were talking about me. I'm a Girl Scout leader, and it's a great experience. Join us. We always put the girl first. Just because I'm older, don't give up on me. You know, I haven't been myself lately. Maybe you thought it was old age, but it was alcohol. At my age, with the medication I need, alcohol can be dangerous. I'm thankful someone finally noticed and cared enough to call for help. I've got good years left in me. I want to leave them with clear mind. So if you care, don't give up on me. Call for help. A large crowd on hand here at Joliet Central Gymnasium for our next Channel 15 High School Basketball Game of the Week featuring the host Steelman of Coach Greg Peden on the season, one and three in the Sicka West and five and ten overall for Greg Peden in his 11th year against the visiting Joliet West Tigers on the cross town. The Tigers at 4-0 in conference, 10 and three overall. Good evening again, everyone. Joe Passion here along with Frank Palmasani in the right corner of your screen. The new Steelman is on. We'll take a look at that. But first, let's look at the starters for today's game for the Tigers of Coach O'Connell. In the backcourt will be Corey Shelby, the 5'10 junior, number 10. And he's joined back there by the off guard, David Evans, 6'2 senior, number 20. In the middle will be Dan Gomez at 6'6". A senior, Gomez wearing number 52. Corey Shelby, 5'10", junior, number 10. Brian McCullough and Gary Bell are up court. And, of course, David Evans runs the show in many senses, averaging 20 points a game. Evans, the outstanding 6'2", senior, number 20. And Coach Michael Connell, in his 11th year as head coach of the Tigers, assisted by Bob Kozlowski over there on your right. And for the Steelmen of Joliet Central and Coach Greg Peden, number 32 in the back in the front court, Andy Offrink, 6'3 junior, Offrink number 32, joined in the front court by the only senior in the starting lineup, number 54, Audie Roberts, a 6'3 senior. In the middle will be a sophomore, 6'2 sophomore, Ulysses Harper, number 44, who really comes out to be a great role player for this team. And the backcourt, a couple of youngsters. Joel House, a 5'10 freshman. Number 10 is House. Had a big game against Joliet Catholic earlier in the week. And Pete Spoto, 5'9 junior, number 12, in the backcourt to size up for Greg Peden in his 11th year as head coach. There's Greg, all smiles early on, along with Dave Wallace, his longtime assistant. Interesting enough, Dave Wallace has a son who plays for Joliet West. And... Michael Connell, the head coach of Joliet West, has a son who plays on the underclass side of Joliet Central. And here's the starting lineups again, Frank Paul Masani, and a lot of talent out there. Well, you know, it's interesting because going into the year, we anticipated that Joliet West was going to basically be a team revolving around Shelby, Elvins, and Gomez. McCullough's come on, done a nice job. He gets the garbage basket for a great defensive player. But the surprise, as we said earlier, is the freshman. Gary Bell, who's made a significant contribution to a team that was already going to be tough. And for the Steelmen, uh, we saw what they can do when they get their emotions up, as they did against the Hill. Well, this is a young team. Freshman, sophomore, two juniors on the club. Audie Roberts is a, is a player, the senior that's got a lead. He's got a score for Central to be in the game. The Tigers in their visiting black jerseys with the gold and white trim. And Evans gets the tip and starts it off, going from our left to our right. 
and quickly from way outside and the basket is off the mark on the part of Gary Bell who takes the first shot but just throws it up too heavy the Steelman and Spoto on the backcourt and off rink can't hold on to the pass from Roberts and it goes out of bounds and the Steelman turn it over first turnover of the game Michael Connell indicated that this year's uh, Juliet West uh, Tiger team was so uh, pleasing to coach because they played so hard defensively and they go with a man-to-man -man defense Central on the other hand also aggressive defensive team playing zone perimeter defense uh, in their zone passing lane defense trying to disrupt the perimeter passes for the Juliet West Tigers Shelby gets it back out and around to McCullough McCullough almost loses it to Gomez and does turnover Roberts on the break wants to pull up does on the line and really working on him is Shelby and the ball is thrown but tipped out of bounds and the ball will go back to the Steelman both teams with a turnover each in the scoreless early first quarter. There's the new Steelman mascot, and if that's really steel, I hope that kid has some weight he needs to lose. Outside is Joel House, a talented young freshman, out to Roberts, the senior. Julia working Central, against Bell. Excuse me, Juliet Central running that motion offense, good screening across. And Joel House starts out and brings the house up to its feet. Here at Joliet Central with the first bucket of the game. Steelman, and here's Evans, out of control. Loses the ball, turnover on the offensive foul against Evans. David Evans, the outstanding senior, and Mike O'Connell, I think, played Joel House a great compliment the other night in our telecast between the Steelman and the Hillman as Joliet West calls a timeout at the 641 mark of the first quarter. He said of Joel House, he reminds me of when David Evans first came up as a freshman. You remember, Frank, four years ago when Evans was the talk of the town as a freshman. No question about it. You know, when you put a guard out there on the floor as a freshman, he's got the responsibility to handle the ball against some real tough defense. And for a player just to go up confidently with jumpers and play as if he's, uh, uh, you know, a part of the flow of the game is an accomplishment in and of itself. And that's what you see in House. And Greg Peden talking with his crew while Mike O'Connell and his staff take an early timeout here coach Palmasani a very early timeout I, I think he really saw his team was entirely out of sync did not want to see happen to the Tigers what obviously happened to the Hilltoppers the other night he's trying to make a point here scores only two to nothing only had a couple possessions I think you're right I think he saw some play out of control and some what appeared to be maybe lack of intensity in terms of getting into the game and he wanted to stop it right now we'll see if the timeout accomplishes that the Steelmen will take it out in their white jerseys, the royal blue and gold trim. And Spoto, the house across the timeline, right now in front of us. Spoto out at half court against Evans. Evans looking for the steal. Cannot get it. Gets it into off rink. Back out to House from three. And he's got it. Joel House has five. And that's our score. Five zip. Evans, an NBA three. No good. Rebound comes down underneath. A good position play underneath for McCullough. First Tiger bucket of the night. McCullough, a real great role player, and really showed that by getting a great rebound and going right up with it. And Weston, three-quarter court, 1-3-1 one, one, trapping defense. Central really not bothered by it. Came down, got a three-pointer last time. This time, again, moving the ball well. Ball bobbling around. Roberts is short on that attempt and trying to find Evans on the break. Third Tiger turnover. A 5-2 Steelman lead. Spoto between the circles against Shelby to Roberts in the far corner. Juliet West in a man-to-man -man defense again. Central running their picking game, their, uh, their screening game. Passing, screening away from the ball. Spoto way up on top against Shelby. Looking for House. Offering, top of the key, dribbles in. and Offering, dribbling against McCullough, and now it's Roberts' turn, looking for the good shot. Central doing a good job. If they don't hurry their offense and pass the ball five, six times, they're going to get a good shot, and that you saw Spoto play a little one-on-one -on -one and get his jumper off. Shelby, the drive, and he goes one-on-one, -on -one, and we're seeing some talented playground players 
Bringing it here to court side. I think the problem, though, is Joliet West is rushing a little bit. They're really not moving the ball before a shot. Players are going one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think Michael Connell wants that. Turnover. He does like that, though. Turnover central as Gomez finds himself with a basketball. From three is Shelby's attempt off the mark. Evans inside, and he went out of bounds. Our referees tonight, Brad Herman of Orland Park and Stan Mitchell of North Riverside. There's a shot of Herman underneath the basket as the Steelman will bring it up. Leading 7-4 with 4.20 left in the first quarter of our high school basketball game of the week. Roberts loses the ball out of bounds, but it was tipped by a Tiger. And the Steelman retained possession. Julia West is clearly playing an overconfident game. Again, no shot, no passes down the floor, just shooting the ball up. Loose underneath, and the ball will go the other way. The foul is against the Steelman. Roberts, his first personal foul. Now, recognizing that, Joliet Central really wants to take time off the clock. From a from an uh, offensive standpoint, they should be looking at six, seven passes every time down the floor. Down low they go, and they find Bell. Bell pulls up for two. Gary Bell, the talented young freshman for Joliet West, brings the Tigers within one, 7-6. Great job by Bell. He was pinned underneath the basket, but pivoted back to the hole, and he's a left-hander. And that's so oftentimes difficult for a defensive player not used to playing against left-hand shooters. And a big plus here for the Steelman as David Evans picks up a foul. Ty Calderwood comes into the ball game for Greg Peden's ball club, and Harper sits down. Second personal foul, Frank, on David Evans, averaging 20 points, and he's got two personals and will find some time on the pine early on here. Replaced in the lineup by the Tigers, Linwood Johnson, number 30. Well, number 14 called the word for Julia Central. is clearly a player to watch. He's a six-man type, but he's a player that has started and can score. I think Julia Central will be looking to get in the sink on offense here. David Evans is out of the game, but I'm sure what they're looking to do is move the ball offensively, ram it inside to Gomez, possibly to, to the freshman bell, but also just get some passing going so they, they play a little bit more uh, pro, from the standpoint of a team-conscious uh, offensive attack. Johnson out on top to Shelby. Back over to Linwood Johnson. Cross-court pass, dangerous. Turnover, forced by Roberts. He gets it back from House, in and out. Rebound McCullough. McCullough with two boards already. Waddy Roberts has a tough angle. Should I shoot for the rim or do I go for the glass? No side shots. You want to try to hit the glass as much as you possibly can. Four turnovers here in the first quarter against the Tigers. Three turnovers by the Steelman. Really at Central, nice job of spreading their 2-3 zone out. Bell, four, three shot mark is off the mark. Ball out of bounds. And the first time Frank Palmasani, we saw the Tigers go inside the big six foot six Dan Gomez. But Gomez was covered up in a hurry. Well, right, against the zone, you have to go inside, knock it in, out, and then perhaps go back in or get a good jump shot. But the ball does have to get inside against the extended perimeter defense. Otherwise, all you'll end up doing is taking longer than what you want outside jumpers. To McCullough, looking for Bell. It's got the move inside, stripped away by Roberts, and Audie Roberts with a great defensive steal inside. Good job by Joliet Central. Steelman forcing the fifth turnover of the quarter, and Audie Roberts underneath, no basket, a traveling violation against Audie Roberts. That was really a terrific pass. Joliet Central wanting to knock the ball around the basket. Roberts took a spin move, but again, he did not establish a pivot foot. Shelby on the dribble between the circles against the Steelman zone. And Spoto going for the steal. Shelby from three, tipped by Gomez. Gomez back again for two. Good job by Dan Gomez, keeping the ball alive. We're gonna get that second shot, and he certainly did. The Tigers take their first lead of the game at 8-7, with less than two to play here in the first quarter. Calderwood to House. Down inside, he looks for offering. Back out to Spoto, almost lost the ball. Calderwood back against McCullough. Now Roberts, great one-on-one -on -one there. Roberts and the, a senior, the freshman Bell. 
off rink, gets it back out to Spoto. And the Steelmen passing the ball around, looking for their shot. House wanted it, lost it. Roberts up with it and is blocked. And a foul against Gomez. He got some flesh with the leather. And that'll be Gomez's first personal foul. This has really been a perfect quarter for Juliet Central. Again, every time down the floor, they're taking a disciplined approach, moving the ball around, setting screens away from the basket, waiting for the defense to break down, and so far it has broken down. Audie Roberts at the line, and he misses the first. Audie Roberts at a Washington Junior High School, outstanding baseball player. And he gets the other. Good rotation, nice back spin on that free throw. Roberts first bucket of the half, and we're tied at eight. Crazy eights here between the two JTs. A nice little feed by Bell inside to McCullough. And McCullough gets the bucket, his second field goal, and it gives a deuce lead here for the Tigers at 10-8. One minute left in the quarter. Great awareness on the floor by Gary Bell. The in, pass, and the pass to the baseline. High post to low post. Not too many freshmen can recognize that quickly on the floor and execute it. Which will send Audie Roberts back to the line because Gary Bell, there's a good look at the talented young freshman wearing number 40. Picks up his first personal foul. Bell at 6'3". I always ask the kids what their nickname is, and Audie Roberts' nickname, and I'm not sure exactly who gave it to him, but it's Showtime. And he shows up with two free throws to tie this ball game at 10 apiece. Shelby outside. Excellent ball handler, Corey Shelby. And he looks, shows his moves inside. Oh, a good look pass. to McCullough. But he could do nothing but put it up and draw the foul, which he wisely does. Once Shelby gets inside the defense, he basically can dictate where he's going to put the ball. He can dish it underneath to the baseline side. He can kick the ball back out. He can really set up any player on the floor with that good penetration. The foul is on Roberts, his second. And at the line, Brian McCullough, senior out of Upper Junior High School. McCullough's shot is good. He's got five in it. A great thing about McCullough, not only is he a National Honor Society member, but he, when he grows up, he wants to be a high school math teacher. Usually they want to be coaches. This kid wants to teach math. That's great. Gives you an idea of where McCullough's priorities are. Apparently in the right place. Down low, McCullough's shot is off the mark. 11-10 in favor of the Tigers. House from 18, off the rim, rebound, no. Roberts had it, lost it. Shelby, little spin move in the lane, puts it up, it was partially blocked by House. McCullough's follow-up is good, and Brian McCullough, averaging five points a game, has seven here in the first quarter. It's 13-10 in favor of the Tigers. Five seconds left in the quarter. And a foul underneath against Brian McCullough, his first. Uh, Joel House made a freshman error last time he had possession of the ball, Joe. Uh, what you don't want to do is take a shot with about 20 seconds left in the quarter in that kind of situation. Ill-advised because the miss gave West an opportunity to pick up an extra score. Calder will inbound the ball with three seconds on the first quarter clock. Spoto tried to put it off the backboard, but no good. We have come to the end of the first quarter of play here of our high school game of the week at Joliet Central. The Steelman trailing the visiting Tigers by three, 13-10. We'll be back after this timeout. Graduation, quite a day. But where do you go from here? You want something challenging. You'll find it in the Air National Guard. The Air Guard can give you skills you'll use for a lifetime. You'll make good money, and after you train, you serve just two days a month and 15 days a year. That means time for yourself and your country. The Air National Guard. Because graduation isn't the end. It's just the beginning.
Every year, thousands of babies die from choking, suffocating, or other breathing emergencies. Just imagine how many of them could be saved if only they came with instructions. Please learn American Red Cross Infant and Child CPR. American Red Cross. We help you help others. We open up the second quarter, and the Tigers right now don't look so little. They lead by three, 13 to 10 against the Steelmen here at Joliet Central. Joliet Central in their home white with the royal blue gold trim. Ty Calderwood pulls up for a 12-footer. No good. Rebound comes down to McCullough, and he quickly dribbles it up court. The Tigers, David Evans back in the ball game with two fouls. Losing the ball underneath on the break is Spoto. He's got a three-on-one, takes it himself for two. Good look off by Spoto. He looked his defensive player off, faked the pass by the look, and was able to take the layup himself. Spoto with four points, and the Steelmen are within one. 13-12. Joliet West extending the zone defense with the skip pass. The skip pass, skipping a player, throwing the ball across the floor. Looking for Bell, wasn't ready for it. Another turnover, here's House. And House has the ball stripped from behind. Stripped from behind by Linwood Johnson. But he yeah. also draws a foul. Michael Connell has got to be very displeased with the performance of the West kids to date. Uh, basically what we've seen is too much one-on-ones, too much over-penetration, not a real good sense of, of wanting to attack that defense. Kyle DeVries comes into the ball game for Joliet Central, replacing Offrink. And at the line for the Steelman is the young freshman Joel House. House out of St. Mary Magdalene, also an outstanding baseball player. And And he gets one of two and ties the game at 13. Say we've got two very impressive freshmen on the floor here, Joe, tonight with House and Bell. Mike O'Connell was mentioning the other night while replacing the new coach that it, he's got to look at Joel House for four more years. I'm sure if Greg Peden was sitting beside him, he'd say the same about Gary Bell. Great move inside by Shelby, but it's just showtime. It's no time. Roberts himself and the offensive foul. He had people on each side and he went in. And Evans gave himself up and Bell to take that foul. Good job, excellent defensive play. Again, sacrifice your body, take the charge. Offering back in the ball game, giving Roberts a rest. Roberts picking up his third personal foul for the steal, and there's another look, and that's what you call giving up your body. David Evans gave up a lot of it on that shot. Roberts with three personal fouls on the bench now. Evans out, and a long three-point attempt, no good. Right back up with the basket, however, is Demetrius Anderson, number 42, a 6'3 junior for the Tigers. Oftentimes when things aren't clicking and you're a team that's not performing as well as you can, you get a lift from the bench. And that time Demetrius Anderson came off the bench, did a nice job of getting the ball off the glass. Calderwood with a move underneath, but he draws a foul from Anderson, his first personal. When you look at the Central Club, the key player in terms of being able to take the, uh, the game on a one-on-one -on -one basis and create opportunities is Calderwood. At the line for the Steelman is Ty Calderwood. Calderwood, a sophomore, he's a transfer student. He came here to Joliet from Idaho. And he puts it in. A three-sport athlete is Calderwood, baseball, football, and a obvious basketball player here for the Steelman, and he can't get that one. Tigers by one, 15-14 with six minutes. Evans gets his first bucket of the night, and David Evans, who sat half of the first quarter in foul trouble, comes back with his first bucket of the night, 18 short of his average. David Evans showed why he's the player that he is. Great penetration, good control. Calderwood from 18, off the back of the rim, loose ball and comes out to Harper. Spoto on the dribble against Evans, out to Offering. DeVries looks to Spoto, wide open 12-footer, misses everything. 
loose ball underneath and coming up with it on the break to Evans and he just glides in for two offensive foul against David Evans and he can't believe it either can Mike O'Connell I don't think anyone liked the call on the west side that's for sure David Evans glided to the basket there was contact but I don't believe that the basket is counting David Evans picks up his third personal foul and he is all over referee Brad Herman here's another look at it and it looked to me coach like Harper got position could have gone either way tough call game continues a three point West lead with 505 left in the first half the breeze to house house pulls up shake and bake and he hits nothing but the bottom of the net and that's a freshman just when you're about to say bad shot not what you want house comes up with an unbelievable jumper eight points for Joel house another turnover on the break to off rink against Evans he had way too much loose ball to breeze right back up for two and all of a sudden a 6-0 surge by the Steelman puts them back up on top by one 18 to 17 with 433 left to go in the first half and Joliet West calls a timeout to settle the Tigers down from this upstart Steelman team. Joliet Central, unbelievable run here. West obviously not playing real good basketball and Central taking advantage of it. Coach O'Connell, who was very upset with the call against David Evans, showed how upset he was, but has been able to calm himself down, get back in the huddle, and uh, try to get his team to accomplish some things on the floor. Here's the break to off rank. Evans really altered his shot, but look who's right there. Harper's there, tips it over to DeVries, and he uses the glass very coolly for the bucket. And you got three, four Steelmen down there on that break. And, and those West players, there were only two or three West players. And again, I think an indication of the fact they're really not into it uh, as you would think they would be. This is very, very synonymous with the way things were going in the second half of the game that we televised from here the other night that you saw here at Channel 15 and how a, a much better by record on paper Joliet Catholic Academy team appeared coming in but Joliet Central just did something to them and right now the Steelmen are doing it to the Tigers this time though they do it in case of a foul. Well you know one of the things that uh, Greg Peden has been attempting to accomplish all year and obviously it is showing it showed Tuesday night and again showing tonight, and that is he's building. He's building with the style of play. He's building with continuing to reinforce the way he wants the game played, not altering philosophy in terms of each opponent, just trying to build for the progress and, and the uh, overall development of, of his team throughout the year. And I think uh, Tuesday night could have been a catalyst. At the line is Gary Bell, outstanding 6'3 freshman for Juliet West kid everyone was talking about in junior high and of course coming over to JT West ties up the game with a big rebound coming right back to it for the Tigers is Demetrius Anderson he has four here in the quarter two big rebounds off the glass for Demetrius a Anderson picking up some stick back baskets it became a three-point play and a one-point lead for the Tigers a turnover McCullough on the defense forcing that turnover and on the break here come the Tigers McCullough on the other end actually Linwood Johnson forced that turnover on the other end McCullough number 34 on the offensive end gets the basket and this is where the Tigers are deadly when they control the tempo and Greg Pete very very wise time out here See, the problem was Joel House uh, went to a shake and bake two times ago down the floor and scored. Now, that worked, but from a percentage standpoint, that's not going to happen very often, especially when you got somebody in your face. And House just went one too many times to the well. Now, here's a pass down the floor, and I watch McCullough take the ball strong to the basket, avoid the contact, avoid the offensive foul, and use the glass very well. Nine points for Brian McCullough, already four over his per game scoring average. 353 left to go here in the first half in front of a packed gymnasium here at Joliet Central, and they are dancing to the tune of the Tigers' four point lead. 
And if you look at West scoring, Joe, take a look at McCullough, Linwood Johnson. These have been the players that have picked up the Tigers. And they have all come off the bench. Except McCullough, of course, he started and as a role player, he's picked up the role because the aces aren't coming through with the cards. The pressure, Spoto looks and almost stolen, but McCullough a little bit too aggressive and picks up the foul. Uh, West in there, 1-3-1, one, three-quarter one, three court that really moves to a half-court trap. McCullough plays the baseline, the bottom, the tail. He's a very active player. He can go from side to side. He's looking to get the steals. At the line will be Andy Offering, a junior out of Elwood Junior High School. Offering also a three-sport athlete, baseball, football. Now, you ask yourself, folks, Here's a kid whose favorite class is chemistry. No good, loose ball. Get back to offering story a little later. Corey Shelby feeds it inside. Bell looking, McCullough pulls it back wisely. Great job by Bell, took the ball on the baseline and immediately looked through the lane. Down inside, Anderson turn around, gets the jump, no he doesn't. Ball loose, McCullough saves it from going out of bounds and comes right back to the baseline, smooth as silk. Can't get the ball to fall. Calderwood the rebound. And the ball almost stolen away. Calderwood retains possession down low. Has a man, a jump ball. Good whistle call. The possession arrow gives the ball back to the Tigers. Good job by Calderwood though. Took the ball down the floor on the break. Got to the free throw line and found the open man. Three oh six left to go here in the first half. 22-18 Tigers. Joe Passion here along with Frank Palmasani in our Channel 15 Continental Cablevision High School Basketball Game of the Week. And coming up at the half, Frank Vance wow. has prepared something for you. Almost as lengthy as that three-point attempt, but it's no good. But nice work underneath. That shot was taken from the O-zone. Johnson now with two points in the half. A six-point Tiger lead, their biggest of the game. Two and a half left in the half. Spoto. And the Tigers really playing more of an up aggressive defense, Coach. Absolutely. Obviously, one of the things you want to do when things aren't going as well as you like them to offensively is make your offense happen with some aggressive defense. Shelby on Calderwood, out to Spoto. Down low for DeVries, turnaround jumper over Anderson. The whole key there is the number of passes, Joe. Central is doing a good job because it's not one or two passes in a shot, but it's six or seven. Anderson comes right back with the rebound and he gets some bounce on the rim. Demetrius Anderson has six points here in the second quarter off the JT West bench. And again, a Players off the bench, Anderson, Johnson, uh, garbage basket players like McCullough really making the strong contribution. Six point Tiger lead with a minute and a half left in the half. Well, ball almost stolen away by Bell. DeVries shovels it into Spoto, or rather Calderwood misses everything. Off rink has it back, out to DeVries, to Spoto. And Spoto trying to set up the play between the circles with a minute five left. Puts up the left-hander and draws the foul from Brian McCullough, and that'll be McCullough's third personal foul. And Pete Spoto will go to the line for the Steelman. Dan Gomez checking back in here, Joe. And also coming back in is, or for the first time, Mike Paspen, a six-foot junior. Mike O'Connell likes to use eight players. Yeah, off the bench, Anderson passed Vinnon Johnson, and he's accomplished doing that now in the first half. Pete Pistol Spoto out of St. Pat's Junior High School. And he'll be heading to Florida State when he gets out of high school, and he makes one or two. Did you see Elton John was in the stands there, Joe? You, I did. That you catch that? Yeah. He's playing at the post-game concert. It's a sacrifice. Uh oh, excuse uh, me. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> 
photo down low. Beautiful pay Great inside move by Joel House. House has 11 points in the first half. House in your face. That is what is called in the playground a severe facial. 30 seconds left in the half. And JT West playing catch with the ball. They have a three-point lead in the ball. And they'll go in at halftime up three, up five, or up six in their own minds. They'll hold it out. Uh, doesn't bother Coach Beaton. He'll sit in the defense. He's probably pretty satisfied only being down three at this point. Single digits on the clock. Shelby stolen away by Spoto. And a reaching in foul by the freshman Bell. This is exactly what Central did to Joliet Catholic in three of the last possessions of periods of play in that Tuesday night game of the week. I'll tell you, Pete Spoto is an inspiring type of player. He plays hard, gets a big steal for you, and uh, he's at the free throw line with hopes of cutting this deficit down to one. Houston Adams, a 6'3 junior, will come into the ball game for Joliet West, and the freshman Gary Bell leads the game with two fouls. At the line will be Pistol Pete's photo, the junior out of St. Pat's. It's off the mark, the rebound comes right out to Adams, but the clock runs out. And we have come to the end of the first half of play here of our game of the week with the score. The Tigers going into the locker room, leading the Steelmen and their fans by three. 26-23, our score at the break. And we'll be back with more of our halftime festivities in Joliet Central right after this timeout. situation I had to get out. I needed help with Gloria was there for us. Gloria Gooding was one of a team of child welfare professionals who helped Patty keep her family together. Help is getting me start. I'm going to school and the kids are doing great. Every day child welfare professionals like Gloria Gooding are making a difference one family at a time. It's a good feeling to know you're helping a family stay together. While the Steelman mascot drags a tiger across the Steelman floor here at Joliet Central, it is the Steelman who are dragging behind by three here at the break. 26-23 of our game of the week. Joe Passion back with you along with Frank Palmasani. And it has been a game of ebb and flow. We saw Central really take West out of their game for a while there, Frank. And, but West really tuned it up, and they did it with the help of their bench and starter Brian McCullough. No question about it. There's really the key in the first half. They've not gotten the contributions that you would expect out of a David Evans, much of it because of foul trouble, out of a Dan Gomez, out of a Corey Shelby, and really not too much out of Gary Bell, but yet McCullough, Anderson, and certainly Linwood Johnson have uh, made a significant contributions. Our leading scorers at half for Central, Joel West with 10, and with nine points, Brian McCullough for Joliet West. Earlier in the week, our Frank Vance had a chance to hang out at his favorite places, high school gymnasiums, and talking with two of his favorite coaches, Mike O'Connell and Greg Beaton about this great matchup between these two teams. Uh, right from the beginning, I thought it was us, Romeville, and Lockport. Um, and that's what right now it's coming down to, although I think Bolenbrook on a given night is going to be able to beat some people. Anybody on a given night can beat some people. Don't get me wrong. You, you come in flat and you could be in trouble in any conference. Uh, you know, we lost some kids last year. Every year we seem to lose two or three starters and we get predicted to win it the next year, which which is fine with me. Some of these other coaches don't like to be predicted to win it. I, I guess it shows a little respect for the program, and we'll take that. Uh, but, you know, you know, it's like two years ago we, we lost three starters and three leading scorers. 
and we were predicted to win it the next year, and I was kind of like, it's, it could be tough to do, but we gave it a good run. Well, you know, it's difficult for us, certainly. We want to get out on the floor and be competitive, and, and we're trying our best to do that. But at the same time, we also have to be patient because you do have so many young kids. Uh, they're going to make freshman and sophomore mistakes. Uh, even our juniors do not have really any varsity experience. Audie Roberts is the only kid back with any varsity experience. And it's tough to go in a situation and really be competitive against the likes of Lockport, Joliet West, and, and Bolingbrook and Romeoville with the kind of athletes they have. You know, as I reckon, ain't that good right now. Um, you know that we're a young team and that, you know, that's not an excuse anymore. But the coach has been doing many drills that has been building up our endurance and stuff. And um, he's, he's been trying to discipline us the most in these drills. You know, we can't make them at a certain time, run them again. You know, he had a practice where we ran for two hours straight. You know, he, he just wants us to be disciplined out there. You know, we want to show him too that, you know, that, that we are disciplined. But, you know, we're just, in the, in the beginning of the games, like first, second quarter, you know, we don't come out all that pumped up. You know, but the second half we turn it on, but it's always too late because we're always behind. Essentially, you know, it's, it's a time where we all play together, we are friends, you know, and we want the bragging rights, you know, for the many years we've had it. We want to continue to stay hype, you know, and continue, you know, playing hard, you know, giving it all we got when we come out and play. You know that they get up for us, especially just because we're Joe West. So we know we can't just come in thinking that we're going to just dog them because. We know they're going to be up for it. <laughs> it ain't going to be that easy. Well, I heard that they always play them good no matter, you know, how bad the, their uh, previous records were and all this stuff. But last night I went to the Central game, and they were pretty hyped when I came in. They said they was going to be ready for me, so I'm looking forward to it. Out of your memory, what has been one of the best games between you and Joliet Central? There's been many of them, but one that may stay out in your mind. Well, there have, there have been many, and in particular in regional finals, we've had several good ones. I think that one a few years ago when Evans, Evans was a sophomore, where just seesawed back and forth, and I believe David as a sophomore had 24 points, and I think it was your first live game. Yes. And uh, just, uh, he had a couple NBA threes, and uh, the intensity, I think about 3,000 people there, and it was, I, it was a great high school basketball game. Well, here at halftime at Joliet Central Gymnasium, the Tigers in the locker room of Joliet Central's gym, leading by three, 26-23. And Frank Palmasani and I will be back with our second half of our game of the week, featuring this battle between the two JTs, the Tigers leading the Steelmen. You're pathetic, you little brat. Child Jerk. abuse is also known by some other words. Jerk. You moron. You're so clumsy. Words like these can hit as hard as a I fist. You were never born. I hate you. What you say to your children can determine how they feel about themselves. You slob. And how they feel about you. Get the picture. Stop using words that hurt. Start using words that help. For helpful information, contact us. Joliet Central Gymnasium in front of a packed house here tonight where the visiting Tigers of Crosstown Joliet West lead at the break 26-23. Joe Passion here along with Frank Palmasani and the crazy fans of the Joliet Central Steelmen. You know, we talked about this the other night, Coach, and that's how even though the Steelmen are down record-wise this year coming into the ball game at an overall mark of 5 and 10, they're coming off a big emotional win over Joliet Catholic Academy 51-39 earlier in the week, and Fans are out here for the big games, at least in the rivalry. You know, and that's really what it's all about. You know, you think about high school athletics or college athletics, and, you know, the kids on the floor it's, it has great meaning to them. It also has great meaning to the kids that come to the games that uh, feel a part of the team because they're out there cheering for them. And this is also a first for the whole family to come out and see the new Joliet Central Steelman mascot. And I'll tell you, these ladies seem very excited by it, and I certainly am. And now, this looks like steel. I think this is a great job by whoever did this. I really mean that because the costume is very flexible. I mean, who's ever inside there was... Is seven feet tall. And should be playing on the court, <laughs> I'm sure. 
We may see him in later in the ball game if Central gets down too far. We're about to get ready with the second half, 26-23. The Tigers leading the Steelmen, and Ty Calderwood will inbound the ball here at half court. The Steelmen in their white home jerseys against the Tigers visiting black and gold and white. Calderwood into Pete Spoto. Be Spoto, Calderwood, DeVries, and Roberts for the Steelmen starting out this half. Spoto in trouble, gets it out to house. Roberts pulls up from 10, short, rebound, Bell. West starting right away with the 1-3-1 half court trap. Wise move, get the juices flowing aggressively on defense. David Evans oh, takes it to the hole. Board. Right there is Brian McCullough. McCullough now with 11 points in the game. He led the Tigers with nine in the first half. He's really had a terrific ball game. He's really picked the Tigers up, goes to the offensive glass as well as anybody. Spoto down into Roberts. He loses the ball, an offensive foul against Audie Roberts, his second offensive foul of the game, and he's now got four personal fouls against Audie Roberts. We've seen David Evans do that several times now in the game. He does a good job, understands what the offensive player wants to do, gets right into his lane defensively, and takes the blow. It'll take Roberts out of the game and brings back in Andy Offering, the 6'3 junior, who went scoreless in the first half, although had an outstanding game against Joliet Catholic, double figures in rebounds. Shelby looking around, trying to feed it inside, but right there is DeVries to steal the ball away. The Steelman, seven turnovers unofficially in the first half the Tigers nine turnovers unofficially in the first half and now with one here in the second a brick up top and the Steelman bring it up Pete Spoto on the dribble to Joel House pass and move offense pass screen away pass screen away seven eight passes that's what Juliet Central wants off rink in between the circles against Bell, out to Calderwood. House. Breeze back out to Spoto in between the circles against Shelby. Calderwood. This is an excellent job by Joliet Central. One might not think it accomplishes much, but what it does is it gets the defensive players flat-footed. Gets them out of the rhythm of playing aggressive defense. Joel House's three-pointer is no good, and Bell will go up himself, does not get it. Rebound McCullough, and give Brian McCullough kudos for an outstanding placement for that rebound, and he goes right back up for two more. McCullough now with 13 points in the seven-point lead for the Tigers, 30-23, and Mike O'Connell looks at a Joliet Central timeout with 5.40 left in the third quarter and he's got to like what he's seeing out there by his kids on the floor. What he really likes is what Brian McCullough is able to contribute because you know that you're not going to have flat performances out of the out of the premier Joliet West players every night. So if he can get this kind of play out of McCullough, this team can only get better and better. We'll take another look at it, and you'll see how Bell wanted to head fake to his left, but he decides to go right up with it, avoids the offensive foul, but look at McCullough, number 34, goes right up for the rebound. He's in between four Steelmen, and he goes right up for two. Brian McCullough really has done a job. He is a six-foot senior, averaging five points a game this year. He has 13 tonight, and Frank, one thing Mike O'Connell told me before the game about Brian McCullough, he's a very steady in force on this ball club. Good role player, helps set the pace, a good passer, a very aggressive rebounder, as we just saw. And one thing, too, is he doesn't shoot often, but when he does, he hits 67% from the field. Well, you can see why. He's the player that we talk about the garbage baskets. Well, the garbage baskets are often the most difficult baskets to get because you've got to get the tough offensive rebounds, and that's what McCullough does. Spoto, a three-point attempt is too much by offering, and the rebound to who else? McCullough. Down to Evans from three, and David Ooh. Evans finds his range. He has just three attempts tonight on officially. He has a two-point field goal early in the second quarter, and this Trey here to give a 10-point lead to the Tigers, their biggest lead of the game. What you remember most about David Evans' great games 
is his ability to do just what he did there. Take the ball on the break, come down, know where the three-point line is, stop right before he hits it, and get the good, smooth jumper off. Dan Gomez alters his shot twice there of Offrink on the other end. Shelby's shot is in and out. It goes out of bounds. The ball will go to the Steelman with 4.50 left to go in the third quarter. A 33-23, 10-point Tiger lead. Well, clearly, Joliet West is, is now uh, getting control of the game, not by great leaps and bounds, but just pecking away. Another big steal here by Shelby. Going to put the lead at 12. Call the cops. Pete's photos calling 911. He's just been robbed. Corey Shelby with the pick and coming through with the bucket. Shelby has just four points tonight. He averages 12 a game. 35-23, 12 point Tiger lead. 4.15 left in the third period. Calderwood wants to work on Evans, he won't let him. Down low to Harper. Harper, good move against Gomez, but he can't get at the ball too much. Rebound Bell and down comes Corey Shelby with the ball. Back out to Shelby, to Evans. There are the two three-point aces. Oh, beautiful. That beautiful. was a terrific pass. Good timing on the pass. Ball didn't go down, but really nice to watch. And Evans comes right back. He loses the ball. He was trying to set him up himself up for the jam and bring this crowd to their feet. But instead, he sits them all right back down. Three twenty-six left in the third period. Ball going back and forth. Evans again another pass. Bell's shot is off the mark. Gomez gets it and puts it right back up. Dan Gomez has two buckets in both in similar fashion. And Joliet Central calls a timeout with 3.14 left in the third quarter and a 14-point lead, 37-23. And I think what we have here now, Joe, is a coast situation. You're seeing Joliet West just sort of coast into a larger and larger lead. Stampin' and Joliet Central, unfortunately, is now they got down a little bit and then they went away from their game plan and some of the kids are trying to take quick shots. You just can't do it. No matter what the score is, you can't shoot the ball too quickly. Well, David Evans pushed the ball out to Bell who threw up a three-point attempt. But watch Gomez go for the basket. Nice hustle by Dan Gomez. Good job maintaining his balance. And Dan Gomez at six foot six, outstanding big kid senior out of Dirksen Junior High School and of course he also played baseball and an outstanding football player was the MVP on the Tiger offense this year for Coach Coy. I'd imagine he can uh, put a few people down on some severe blocking. Well I think one thing that you can credit Dan Gomez and his athletic talents really coming to the forefront in the last year is his offseason weight program and a tremendous weight program they have here at Joliet uh, Central as well as at Joliet uh, West. And one thing about the Will County Schools, that all-season weight program that all athletes are becoming an active part on, it is part of their sport workout. And you're seeing it by the, the bulk and the strength and the overall speed and quickness of these high school kids today. Absolutely. And when you talk about weight training program, Joe, you talk about Officer Rudiger, who we saw just a few minutes ago. Of course, speaking of Francis Rudiger of the Joliet Police Force, a nationally renowned award-winning weightlifter who runs the Rudy's gym in fact the two police officers were up in the grandstands kind of moping around and keeping an eye on the crowd along with Dean Mack well Rudy's a weightlifter the other officer with him is also a weightlifter at about six foot four and then there's Dean Mack and he still lifts weights on Sundays does those 12 ounces he's Keeps his arms in shape. Long shot by Roberts, and he finds it for two. Audie Roberts rings it up. Roberts now his first field goal of the game. He has five. Bounce pass, nice look oh, inside yes. to Gomez for two. Good basketball. Bounce pass inside, dump pass to the baseline, and a hard, hard attack to the basket. Gomez draws the foul and will go to the line. Coming in for the Steelman will be DeVries replacing Audie Roberts. The foul 
was on Ty Calderwood as first, and here's that look again. Great bounce pass, great inside pass to Gomez, and watch Gomez go up top. And Gomez completes the three-point play. They call him Guam, and he's almost as big as the island, and he comes through with another big play there. Gomez now with seven points and a 15-point Tiger lead with 2.25 left in the third quarter. Joel House, the basketball, on the dribble, has it stolen away for a moment, right back with it. Off rink to DeVries. Spoto, House from three, up the back of the rim, rebound Anderson, and here comes Corey Shelby. Good job of cleaning the board by Anderson. Stolen away by House on the long bounce pass, Offrick is there by himself, gets the basket and draws the foul from Corey Shelby. Good job by House recognizing Offrick down the floor and Offrick using his body in front of the defensive player and the glass. For Andy Offrick, the 6'3 junior, averaging seven points a game. That was his first field goal of House the game. House with a nice pass down the floor. Watch how Offrick takes the ball, power dribble, uses his left hand, therefore, Keeping the defensive player away from the ball makes the defensive player makes contact and Mike, the possibility for a three-point play. Mike Pastbin is back in the ball game for Joliet West, offering a junior out of Elwood Junior High School. And I told you about him. He loves chemistry. His nickname is Cool Papa Jay. Now, does Offering look like a Cool Papa Jay to you, who favorite class is chemistry? I'm I'm uh, just amazed at the creativity of these guys with the nickname. <laughs> Talk about some ingenuity. <laughs> Andy deserves a point just for that name in itself. 156 left in the third quarter. A 12-point lead now for the Tigers after that three-point play by Andy Offering. His first points of the night. Stolen away by Spoto, his third steal of the game. Nice job by Spoto coming down from his guard position defensively for that steal. Tried to go the reverse layup by DeVries is no good. And Shelby pushes it up to Pastevin. Down low to Gomez, and Gomez has it slapped away, but he traveled. Dan Gomez turns the ball over, and the Steelman will get it back. DeVries out of the game. Joel House back in the ball game. Tigers have turned the ball over four times here in the second half after nine first-half turnovers. The Steelmen have turned the ball over three times here in the second half. Calderwood looks inside. Good luck to That's Roberts, good. and it is blocked. Blocked by Anderson, and Roberts and Anderson share smiles. I'm sure they have traded facials on the playground in the past, and the Central Steelman crowd looking at their senior, Audie Roberts, in the face, and here's another look at a face. Watch a good pass here by Calderwood. Takes the ball on the floor, over the top. Audie Roberts, shot is good. Did I call him Calderon? Calderwood. It's Ivan Calderon. I think he plays another sport, doesn't he? I don't think Ty has that much jewelry. Ah. A 10-point lead. So the Steelman very slowly beginning to slice away at that 15-point lead that the Tigers had. Gomez looks inside, stolen by Roberts. And the Steelman, with less than a minute here in the third quarter, have a chance to slice the deficit to eight or seven. Ulysses Harper outside against Anderson, back out. And the Steelman will melt the clock. Roberts to Ty Calderwood, and Calderwood in trouble. Oh, good for pass. Roberts and has Roberts. The basket is good, and he draws the foul, and the Steelmen are taking it to the hoop. Good pass again to the smart side. If you pass the ball to the smart side, and the offensive player has done a good job of positioning himself with his back to the basket, the pass leads to the score. The pass indeed teaches you or helps you make the drop step, and that's exactly what happened that time. Third personal foul against Demetrius Anderson. Roberts' three-pointer brings the Steelman within seven with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. 40-33 Tigers. 
Well, Jillian Central, uh, just a few minutes ago, looking like it was going to get buried in this one, has come right back in it. Seven, or rather eight, unanswered points for the Steelman here in this third quarter rally. Shelby shaking bakes, photo the steal at the buzzer, Ooh. and he got it away, but not close enough. Photos fourth steal of the game and we have come to the end of three the steelmen are making a run at the tigers they trail by seven 40 33 prior to today's game a big topic of conversation beside basketball tonight was a big topic of conversation between a couple of students who talked to the crowd earlier this evening on march on march 17th you will vote for a referendum that will determine the future of our district. Without your help, the outstanding classes, the tremendous sports programs, and the other valuable activities will die. Please help us. You can make a difference. Help us keep the spirit that's here tonight alive. Don't make February 25th the last West Central game. Vote yes on March 17th. Thank you very much. Farrah Jamal Gay of Joliet Central and Brian McCullough of Joliet West talking to the crowd about the much talked about referendum to keep sports and other activities alive at Joliet Township High School. David Evans inside opens up the fourth quarter with a bucket for the Tigers. Evans now with seven points and back to a nine point Tiger lead. Joe Passion here along with Frank Palmasani on our Channel 15 game of the week. You'll see these Tigers again next week when they take on the Romeoville Spartans in what could be for first place in the Sicka West. So well, that's a game that uh, you know, I think everybody in town is certainly looking forward to. And Spoto is pushed off by Shelby. So Shelby draws the foul, and that'll be Corey's second personal foul against the fine young junior point guard for Joliet West. Seven eleven left in the fourth. The Steelman with the ball. Inbounding, stolen by Shelby. Shelby picks himself right back up, gets it to Evans, Ooh. pulls up from 14, no good. Calderwood gets the rebound, a reaching in foul uh, against Bell. And Gary Bell, the freshman, averaging 14 and a half points coming into this ball game, has just three, and that includes only one field goal. Well, Gary Bell obviously has not performed up to the same level that we've heard about uh, you know, prior to this ball game, but I think this one's still a great learning experience for him. Uh, I think that you get involved in the reputation of the Joliet Central, Joliet West games, and the expectations of the game. Ty Calderwood on the dribble gets it to Joel House. House pulls up from 12, off the mark, loose ball, rebound, Gomez, and down come the Tigers. Shelby on the dribble, inside to Gomez, dribbles back out, and McCullough back in the ball game. Evans. Tries to keep it in, does the Bell. Bell bounces it off Calderwood and it goes out. Ball to the Tigers. Good smart play that time by Bell, bouncing it off the legs of Calderwood to keep possession for his team. 6.32 left in the game. 42-33, Joliet West leading the Steelman of Joliet Central. All the way out to half court goes David Evans on the inbounds from McCullough. Inside look to Gary Bell. A great pass from McCullough to Anderson to Bell. Bell converts his first bucket of the second half. Bell has five, and the Tiger lead grows back to 11. West is really taking advantage of that little play, Joe. Against his own defense, ball into the medium post or the high post, a look right down to the baseline. Audie Roberts on the dribble, out to Spoto. Inside to Roberts, goes inside, too much, loose ball. Harper's miss, and down come the Tigers. 
three-point attempt by Evans, no good. Loose ball underneath and a reaching over the back foul. And the Steelman will get the ball back. That was a shot that I thought David Evans rushed just a little bit too much, shot it a little bit too flat, didn't get into the rhythm. You could see in the arc itself, Joliet West trying to keep the ball alive, coming over the top. The foul is on Demetrius Anderson, his fourth personal, and David Evans and the Tigers here leading by 11, but going to the line for Joliet Central will be Ulysses Harper, the 6'2", 165-pound sophomore. Harper out of Washington Junior High School. Competes in football and track. Roberts the rebound and misses the close-in shot. Back come the Tigers. Evans to Bell. And almost has it knocked away, but McCullough's there to save the day. But then the ball gets loose again, and Roberts the steal. Tigers with eight turnovers here in the second half. Long shot put up, Ty Calderwood gets the bucket. Calderwood's first field goal of the night. Greg Peden giving it the shoot sign. I think he would like his players to let the ball go a little bit. Wants to try to get do something here to get back in the game. Some turnovers and perhaps some three point shots. 5-15 left in the game. Tigers with a nine-point lead. Check that, an eight-point lead. Three-point attempt by Bell. No good. Rebound Roberts. And it gives it off to Spoto, who will bring it up court with five minutes left and trailing by eight. Cross-court pass. Dangerous this time of game. And Offering goes up, and he draws the foul. No, it is an offensive foul uh, against Andy Offering. And that turns the ball over back to the Tigers. And Offering, as you can imagine, does not like it, but an aggressive effort. And also, you know, again, one of the things that we've seen in this game is the great discipline of the Joliet West defensive players. That's about the fourth charge, fourth or fifth charge that they have indeed uh, created by not going for the block and sacrificing their bodies. Evans inside look to Anderson who is wide open in the paint. Good job of looking through the lane and David Evans found Anderson. Demetrius Anderson who came off the bench with six points in the second quarter now has eight. A 10 point Tiger lead. Four, 15 left. Roberts the pull up still misses from close range. Long range pass to Evans. Wanted to bring it around his back to the trailer but instead it goes off his knee out of bounds to the Steelman and Joel House comes back into the ball game and Gary Bell walks back to the other end for defense and Bell was just waiting for that ball to come back. It just never got there, but Greg Peden and his Tigers still trail by 10 with 4-10 left in the game. That was frustrating for Evans because he clearly knew what he wanted to do that time. He ran down, clo uh, uh, down the floor knowing that he had a offensive player behind him. He just couldn't execute the pass. Roberts. Shot is off the mark. Loose ball. Roberts stripped it loose. Pulling up for the jumper off the mark again. Offering from close range. He can't find it. The Steelman get three good shots and they can't get it the fall. Nothing going the way of the Steelman here in this last minute and a half. Juliet Central hustling hard on the backboard. Just can't finish it off. And that's what Greg Peden's telling his players. The effort's there, boys. Keep it up. Oh, I think Greg Peden is very pleased. You know, they've hung in this game the entire time. Still in the game, only down 10. McCullough up top on to Evans. Around to Shelby. Against the Steelman zone. Shelby from three. It is short off the front of the rim. Loose ball. Comes back out to Shelby on the effort by Roberts. And Shelby goes right up the baseline and sneaks in the back door. Good job by Shelby taking the offensive board, the loose ball, and taking it hard to the glass. Corey Shelby with six. Calderwood. He dribbles way out in front of himself, but pulls up for the 14-footer. No good. Roberts hitting the boards, and the ball is out of bounds. Our referees, Brad Herman of Orland Park and Stan Mitchell of North Riverside, and Herman underneath the basket. 
Thielman basketball inbounding underneath their own hoop. Speaking of officials, Joe, did you see the article recently about the 20 top officials? That's right, a couple from the area. Pull up by Shelby, off the front of the rim. Rebound, right back up on the left hand by Bell. And the Joel House has it stolen away by Bell, but it goes out of bounds, back to the Steelman. And perhaps the uh, most famous official that people perhaps, uh, depending on what side you're on, want to forget the name. Remember the Lockport Juliet Catholic game, the big call, the goaltending call. Well, Marv Carlson was in there. Marv's a great official, by the way. And of course, the other official that was in that ball game. That's right, Donnie was, Hakes. Was also there, and of course, Don Hakes was refereeing in the AFC football championship game. He'll not be at the Super Bowl. I'm sure he'll be watching it, though. And offering shot causes a timeout here for Central with 2.33 left to go in the ball game. And the Steelman trailing by 10, 48 to 38. Want to remind you, our next high school basketball game of the week here on Channel 15 will feature these Tigers at Romeoville, or check that, Romeoville at Joliet West on Friday, January 31st at 7.30 tip-off time. A game that could determine first place in the Sicka West. These two teams battling it out for the top spot in that very difficult conference. And then as we go into February, it'll be Providence and Marion Catholic and Ridgewood at Lamont. We'll also see girls regional basketball and Plainfield at Bolingbrook boys, other girls sectional and super sectional basketball and certainly Joliet Central girls team will be one of them that we very well may see here because their team and Marvin Reed's Lady Steelman are one of the top ranked teams in the Chicagoland area. Now Lincoln Way Lady Knights also another outstanding team this year. So some great basketball teams on the girls side and you'll see some of that postseason action exclusively here on Continental Cable TV. Well, we're down to less than three minutes, Joe. We've got a 10-point differential, Joliet West, who basically have, uh, I think, uh, chipped away at the game. No big runs, but have been able to substantiate their play. Certainly not their best game, not their best effort uh, by any means. And Joliet Central, which has not died, uh, played uh, competitively, uh, I think grown through the experience of Tuesday against uh, Joliet Catholic Academy and come out and put on certainly a good show, and the game is still not over. 2.33 left in the game. A 10-point Tiger lead. The Tigers facing some full-court pressure. Spoto with five steals tonight. Going after number six, and he is going after it with everything he's got. He plays hard. Down low to Bell. Bell, the left hand, goes up for two. Gary Bell, the freshman for the Tigers, now has seven. 12-point Tiger lead. Spoto out to Calderwood. Calderwood working on Evans. Back out the house. House looks for the opening, scoops, back up on the follow, and he is fouled the second effort. And Joel House will go to the line for the Steelman. Great effort by the young freshman. You know, Joe, you talk about uh, building for the future. You take a look at Spoto, House, and Calderwood, and uh, next year, Joliet Central will be coming back with three legitimately quality perimeter players. You see, they're not shy freshmen either. Neither Bell nor House or these other underclassmen. And we saw an outstanding sophomore game here prior to the varsity contest. Joliet Central sophomore winning a nail biter in the last minute over Joliet West sophomores by four, 48 to 44. Not only were there some bulk, but some height and some great quickness on both those sophomore teams for Central and West. So it just keeps on going. The it's great talent. Because I, I, you know, I heard from some of the coaches uh, prior to the game we were talking, and a number of these guys have freshmen playing up to the sophomore level, sophomores playing up to the varsity, and so forth. So, you know, you're getting the acceleration that perhaps you didn't get several years ago, but acceleration that's certainly going to pay off. In the case of Joliet Central, who's uh, a building club, I think this clearly will pay off in the next year or two. Joel House gets one of two. House now with 11. He had 10 of those in the first half, and. Maybe we could point to that as being as one key where the Tigers really forced House out of his home. But, uh, you know, you look at keys, certainly you have to look at uh, Brian McCullough's play. He's, he's picked this club up, and as well as uh, the play of some of the Tigers coming off the bench. A foul goes the other way, and the Tigers will take the ball out underneath the Steelman basket. With 1.59 left to go in the game, an 11-point lead for the Tigers and David Evans just
spritz by everybody. Shovels it off and out of bounds. And the Steelman will get the ball back on the Joliet West turnover. Uh, David Evans was looking for his uh, partner to streak to the basket as he was penetrating. Instead, uh, uh, Shelby was hanging around on the perimeter. Steelman trail by 11. Spoto against Shelby. Gets it out the house and loses the ball to Evans. His jam time can't get it to go. That's a little embarrassing for David. He just had a bad angle in the jam. He gets up there, though. That's the second time that Evans has tried to bring the gymnasium down with a jam, but instead he goes down to the bench. It's almost an unwritten rule up here. Uh, the West coaches didn't even look at no. Evans. He knew where he was going after yeah, he missed that. You, uh, you know, the whole key to the dunk is uh, is uh, uh, one word, make the basket. Is that one word? No. <laughs> Three words, make the basket. With a couple of hyphens, yeah, Coach. Right. The ball goes down. Coaches uh, tolerate it. It's very, very fine. But the uh, ball doesn't go down, and nobody likes it. Good look at Brian McCullough, who's been a big key to the uh, Tigers here for this one. And with the Lockport victory Friday night over the Romeoville Spartans, certainly a, a three-way look at the top of the Sicka West, although with the win here, the Tigers will rule the roost at least for a week until they host Romeoville next week. And of course, Lockport which has already lost this season to Juliet West. We'll have the Tigers again later. Offering gets a couple. And another whistle as we get a little sloppy down the line. The Tigers, who are off until Friday the 31st when they host Romeoville, will be at Lockport on February 7th. A big game for both those two teams with the way they are playing right now they certainly have a that certainly could become an even huger game with Friday night's Lockport victory 71 52 over Romeoville well it becomes a uh, almost a must win for Romeoville next week in terms of staying in the conference race and having a shot to win it all pull up jumper by Corey Shelby Shelby now with eight points one minute left to go an 11 point Tiger lead and the Steelman Pete Spoto from three off the back of the rim to House. He puts it up from three and gets it. Joel House, the freshman guard, has 13. And Spoto going for the steal, of course, gets the foul. You know, Joe, uh, Greg Peden's doing a great job here. He's working his team, working his team, wanting his team to play competitively to the end, play the game, to win the game. And whether or not he comes out victorious, obviously the spread is pretty, pretty large at this point. Uh, he's, he's looking to build the confidence from the final score. If they can nip it a little bit, maybe lose the game by five, six, four, you'd say to yourself, well, what's the difference between losing by two, three, four and losing by 12 or 14? A loss is a loss. With a young club, you're looking to build the confidence. And now you come back and say, here, we went out and we took Joliet West to, to a, to a two-point game or a four-point game or a six-point game or a three-bass game, what have you. And that might mean a lot to the psyche of these kids down the road. Here's Corey Shelby, junior out of Washington Junior High School. And I want to remind you, stay with us. Coming up, our post-game show, including interviews with players and coaches, so stay with us following the game. Shot off the front of the rim, rebound Bell. Shelby gets it away, out to McCullough. McCullough has it fouled there. Check that, he stepped out of bounds. McCullough forced out of bounds, a turnover by the Tigers unofficially nine turnovers by the Tigers in each half of this game. I really like Brian McCullough. He's got a cool head, doesn't get bothered by much. 20 seconds left, driving outside. Calderwood had all day for the three, no good. Loose ball, Gomez going after it. Out to Calderwood again, and a reaching in foul by Dan Gomez with 12 seconds left to go. 52-44 Tigers who have this one pretty much wrapped up. The win here will give the Tigers a 5-0 conference record. Overall, the Tigers will up their mark to 11-3.
while the Steelmen will fall to five and 11 and one and four in the Sicka West. At the line is Ty Calderwood. Just a sophomore. This is a whole home win for Joliet West. Uh, they put the W on the board, a W they certainly needed in a game they didn't play well, but uh, one that hopefully they'll build from. I think uh, this will give you a good opportunity for Coach O'Connell to remind the Tigers how important it is to come ready to play in every ball game. Reaching in foul by Spoto, and that'll be all for Pete Spoto, who has played a very aggressive game here tonight, will lead the game with five fouls and five points. Or check that, Spoto has not fouled out of the game. Apparently, he still has another to give. We're looking at six points right here, Joe, and uh, Greg Peden would love to have a missed free throw and an opportunity to throw a three-pointer in, perhaps make the game interesting here with a, a foul before the clock goes. And I want to correct that. Uh, Spoto with just one personal foul. And at the line for the Tigers, Mike Pastman, a junior out of St. Jude, also a baseball player and an honor roll student for the Tigers. And he gets them both. 10 seconds left, the ball thrown away and out of bounds. The Tigers will inbound the ball in their own end. Eleven seconds left, 54-46. Of course, I want to remind you every Monday night here on Channel 15 in Will County, join Frank Vance for an hour of inside local sports. The great sports talk magazine program exclusively on Continental Cable Vision in Will County. Inside local sports every Monday evening on Channel 15 with fabulous Frank Vance. Six seconds left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Frank and I will be joining you in a moment for our post-game coverage of the game, so stay with us. Time to chat with coaches and players about how this game went. Greg Peaton right now certainly has to be happy with the effort, as you mentioned, Frank. But I don't know that any coach would ever be happy with the loss, although Michael kind of looks like more, more like he is the losing coach here tonight. Well, he's thinking about what he's going to say to his kids after the game, thinking about how he's going to take this game and make it a positive experience moving to a very, very big weekend and a big ball game against Romeo The shot missed by Gomez, a three-point by Calderwood is good. And that's the ball game. Calderwood finishes with eight points. And the final score, 54-49. The Tigers win it over the Steelmen here at Joliet Central. And we'll be back with our post-game coverage of our high school basketball game of the week right after this timeout. of gasoline to a seemingly unimportant thing. Low tire pressure. Have you checked yours lately? Do your part. Drive smart. For more energy saving tips, call 1-800-252-8955. Our final score, 54-49. The Tigers hold on and win one here at Joliet Central over the Steelmen to up their conference mark now to 5-0. With me, David Evans and Brian McCullough. Two great games, seven points tonight. A little bit under your average, but obviously great help off the bench tonight. That's going to make you as a starter feel good. Yeah, I mean, it's just me it wasn't in the game, you know, much because I was in foul trouble. So I try to contribute the best way I can since I'm the leader of the team. So, you know, I try to psych my guys up, you know, try to tell them to play hard and don't worry about the stupid fouls. That's right, because you had the fouls that you had to worry about, and everyone else played it without it. And I thought that was a great team effort on your part. And our unofficial player of the game tonight, Brian McCullough, 13 points all over the boards. And you really seemed to take control. And you see David wasn't in his game. Corey wasn't getting into his. You took it over. I saw somebody had to step forward. Coach told us they don't rebound that well, so he told us to slash the lane. So I was trying my best to get in there, and it happened to fall right to me. 
Nice to put him back in. And a great effort up and down the court on both ends for Brian. Uh, real quickly, guys, next week you have Romeoville on your home floor. Uh, the Spartans losing Friday night to Lockport. Does it take anything away from you for the importance of that game to stay on top of the conference? Nah, it, you know, it, it hypes us up, up, us up more because, you know, we, we got to come out and play hard. We got the home, deal, home field advantage. So we got to um, come out and play hard because, you know, they're they going to be in our gym. And, you know, they already got a, um, a loss in the conference, and we still ahead. So we got to, you know, come out and play hard. Uh, we'll go get them, and we'll see you guys here on Channel 15 again next week. All right, congratulations. Great game for David Evans and for Brian McCullough. Final score here, 54-49 for Frank Palmasani. I'm Joe Passion. That's all the time we've got for you. We'll see you next week at JT West. So long, everyone.